Chapter 54 of The Holiest of All by Andrew Murray. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Christopher Smith. Chapter 54 A Better Hope Through Which We Draw Nigh to God. Hebrews chapter 7, verses 18 and 19. For there is a disannulling of a foregoing commandment because of its weakness and unprofitableness. For the law made nothing perfect, and a bringing in thereupon of a better hope, through which we draw nigh to God. In verse 12 we read, For the priesthood being changed, there is made of necessity a change also of the law. When the order of Aaron had to give way to that of Melchizedek, the law under which Aaron had ministered had to give way to the new order, to the law not of commandment, but to the law of the power of the endless life. The reason of this is now given. There is a disannulling of the foregoing commandment because of its weakness and unprofitableness, for the law made nothing perfect. Perfection was what God and man sought as deliverance from sin and its effects, perfect restoration and perfect fellowship. The law could make nothing perfect, neither the conscience nor the worshipper, Jesus came to work out and reveal and impart that perfection the law could only foreshadow. And what this perfection is, we are now told. There is a disannulling of the commandment and a bringing in of a better hope through which we draw nigh to God. To bring man nigh to God into full favour and actual fellowship is the object of every priest. Aaron could not do it. Jesus has done it. This is the glory of the New Testament. It brings in a better hope, a real drawing nigh to the living God, a communion of the Holy Spirit with Him. This is the perfection which, not the law, but Jesus gives. In chapter 6, hope was already mentioned as that through which we enter within the veil, whither our forerunner has gone for us. In the power of the endless life, He has opened the veil and opened the way, he has brought in the better hope through which we draw nigh to God. Draw nigh to God. This expression is one of the finger posts on the way to the higher teaching that is to come. It gives us the main object of Christ's work, to enable us to live our life in the nearness of God. There are Christians who, in seeking salvation, only think of themselves and their own happiness. Christ is simply a means to an end. There are others who go farther, they feel a personal relation to Christ and desire greatly to know and serve Him better. But even with these, there is something lacking which is indispensable to a whole and vigorous Christian character. They do not know that Christ is only the way, the door to the Father, and that His great desire is to lead us through and past Himself to the Father, really to bring us to God. He wants us to live the same life He lived upon earth, always looking up to, depending upon, and honouring a God in heaven above him. Draw nigh to God. Nothing but this can satisfy God and his love. He longs to have his children come to dwell in that love and to delight in his presence. He sent his Son to bring us to him. This is what constitutes full salvation. God, as the author of our being, longs to have us yield ourselves and wait upon himself to work his work in us. As the righteous and holy one, he seeks to have us wholly given up to his will and wisdom. As the unseen and hidden one, he asks that we should withdraw ourselves from the visible and hold fellowship with him. Man was created for the presence of God. The nearness of God was to be his native atmosphere. It is this God is willing to vouchsafe to each of us. It is this the heavenly priesthood makes possible. It is this God would have us seek. As God is no outward being, so is nearness to him nothing external but an inner spiritual harmony of disposition, a fellowship and unity of will. As his Spirit gives us more of the divine nature and God works his will more freely and fully in us, we come nearer to him, we become truly united to him. Draw nigh to God. Nothing less than this is what the redemption of Christ has won and set open for us. This was the weakness of the law, 
that it made no provision for God's people entering into his sanctuary, his immediate presence. The way into the holiest has been opened by Jesus. We may boldly enter in and appear before God. Seated on the throne, our high priest has the power by his Holy Spirit to make the drawing nigh to God our continual abiding experience. He does this in the power of the endless life. Life never works from without, always from within. Our high priest, by his life power, enters our life and renews it and lifts it up. His heavenly life becomes our actual life, and the presence of God surrounds and shines on us as the sunlight shines on our bodies. He is able so to shed abroad the love of God in our hearts that his presence is our joy all the day. Draw nigh to God. Nothing less than this must be what our faith claims. The redemption in Christ is so perfect and all-prevailing, his salvation so complete, the power of his life in us so heavenly and indissoluble, the action of his priesthood so unceasing and unbroken, and the working of his Spirit so sure and so divine, that it is indeed possible for us to dwell all the day in the enjoyment of God's love and fellowship. It is a life state he has entered into, has opened to us, and lives to keep us in. Let us believe it. Yes, let faith be the one habit of our soul, a faith that honours our King Priest on the throne in expecting from him what is impossible to man, what is possible only to God, to keep our hearts all the day within the veil before the face of God. Christ is the door. The door of what? The door of the heart of God. Through him I can enter in and abide in God's love, can dwell in God and God in me. He is the living door who takes me up and brings me in to God. He does it most surely because he is high priest in the power of the endless life. A life nigh to God. This is the better hope which enters into that which is within the veil. Hold fast the glorying of this hope. Give diligence unto the fullness of the hope. Hope maketh not ashamed. God near, the world far. The world near, God far. Jesus entered the presence of God in the path which he opened for us. That path was humility and meekness, obedience and death. It cost Jesus entire and intense self-surrender to open the path and enter in. He has won for us the power to follow him and communicates it to all upright souls in the power of an endless life. Nigh to God. Is this thy life? Is this thy desire? Is this thy expectation? It is the salvation Christ has prepared for thee and waits to give thee. End of chapter 54